Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Stench of the Grubs by Scott Donnelly the warm air of spring came in through my open bedroom window. Once the cold weather broke from the wintertime, it was refreshing to leave my window open at night in the spring before it got too hot in the summer. The fresh air circulated throughout my room, killing off any remaining flu season germs that may have been hanging on for dear life, and cleansed my personal space for the upcoming months. The best thing about the warm, fresh spring air flowing through my room was that it carried the scent of freshly cut grass. It was the best smell in the world, outside of pumpkin spice in the fall and apple cinnamon in the winter. It was a scent I looked forward to every single year, because by the third or fourth week of the mowing season, my senses were just used to it, and it wasn't as exciting or entrancing anymore. But this was the first week of spring, and a few of our neighbors had cut their grass, including my dad. We had a great lawn, lush, green, and was strong with the fresh-cut grass smell. But as I lay in bed after the sun had set, drifting off to sleep, and letting the comforting aromas of spring infiltrate all of my senses, something immediately went awry. The fresh smell was overpowered out of nowhere by a sour, dirty odor. I sniffed, my senses just as annoyed as I was. I sat up in bed and watched my curtains flutter in the light breeze, a breeze that had been tainted somehow by something putrid. But from what? I tried to think back throughout the day. Was tomorrow trash day? Had a raccoon died under someone's porch? That was always a possibility. But after the great raccoon death we experienced last summer, where Juan had somehow found its way into our shed and died, I would have immediately recognized the smell. It wasn't a dead animal either. Wait, the shed, that was it, of course. That had to be it. After my dad mowed, he put down a bag of lawn fertilizer to help give our yard a good shine, as he called it. He said the fertilizer had gone bad somehow, even though that stuff doesn't usually expire from what I understood. He said there were small, moldy plops throughout the bag as he described them. He said the plops were sticky and kind of looked like yogurt-covered raisins. When I questioned why he touched them, he said he wasn't really thinking. I just used his hands to spread the fertilizer around the yard like he was salting a sidewalk in the winter. None of that sounded safe, given all the chemicals involved in fertilizer and the salty ice melt, not to mention these new mysterious plops that were now involved. But I trusted that my dad knew what he was doing. Hopefully. Maybe whatever the plops were was what had been emitting the awful stench that was starting to make me gag. Usually with such an odor, I'd instruct someone to open a window. Well, this was the exact opposite situation. I climbed out of bed and trotted across my room to the window. I pulled the curtains aside and placed my hands on the sash to close it, to seal off the odor from completely ruining my life. There was no way I was going to be inhaling lawn plops all night long. I stopped. The yard below my window caught my eye. Under the dull glow of the street lamp at the curb, I could see our yard was moving, squirming. I squinted, trying to make out exactly what was in motion down there, but it was still too dark. I tried my best to focus, but all I could really make out were… No, I must have been seeing things. There looked to be dozens of white, 
things crawling about in the yard. They were the size of small dogs. Their movements emitted wet, squelching noises. The odor became stronger, overpowering my senses. I removed my hands from the sash and covered my mouth and nose. And then one of the things slapped its wet, slimy body against the outside of the windowsill. I jumped back and gasped. It was huge, definitely the size of a small dog. It hung half in my room, half outside, but desperately cried to crawl in with its six scraggly legs. Its body was white, ribbed, slightly translucent, and curled back like a raw shrimp. Its head and face were a bright rust color with antenna and mandibles. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a grub, but a mutated, massive, monster grub. Without words, I stumbled backwards, tripping over loose Legos, scattered toys, and my aluminum baseball bat. I fell on my butt and watched the mutant bug slap its body down into my room, onto the carpet, and wriggled itself into a position where it stared me down. I know it's hard to believe and might come across as me just capitalizing on the surreal moment I was in, but something deep down inside told me that one day I would face off against a mutant bug. Maybe this was fate. Or maybe it was a momentary, irrational thought. Either way, I reached for my baseball bat and stood up. I smirked out of the corner of my mouth as the hideous grub monster inched toward me. In Little League, they call me the Slugger, I quipped, emphasizing the slug part of the falsified nickname. I hadn't thought the one-liner out very well, seeing as how it wasn't a slug I was facing off against, but a grub. The grubber didn't sound threatening, though. It sounded like the nickname of a guy who only went to the mall to hit up the food court. Either way, it was batters up. I swung and blasted the grub. The creature burst on impact, splatting white and rust-colored goo all over my room. I looked around in shock, but then something at the window caught my eye. It was grubs. They were flopping into my room, left and right. I counted three, four, five. They just kept coming. They all wanted to turn up to bat. Then a loud thud smacked the outside of my bedroom door. Son! My dad called in, distress in his voice. Dad! I responded. Stay out! There are grubs everywhere in here! Son! My dad uttered again, only weaker and more feeble. Something was wrong. Had the grubs infiltrated his room, too? Had they gotten Mom? I watched more grubs fall in through the window as they writhed on the floor, all preparing their march toward me to grub me up or whatever they do. I figured I had a split second to open the door for my dad. I lifted the bat and let it rest on my shoulder, grub goo dripping from the end cap and onto the floor. I turned the knob and pulled the door open. A massive grub the size of a full-grown man lurched upright at the threshold of my room. My body shivered in fear, my teeth chattering. I stared into the rust-colored face, seeing my dad's face mutated within it. I shouldn't have touched those plops, he gargled. I shook my head. No, I mumbled in utter disbelief. No, y you shouldn't have. Without warning, the awareness of my dad was gone, and the savagery of the grub emerged. Its body heaved forward, mandibles snapping, and swallowed my roaring screams. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, Scary Stories for Kids.